Hi guys, Archie Luxury on the Archie Luxury channel. No wrist watch today. That's right. I'm naked. I'm doing this review naked. Sometimes it's good not to wear a fucking watch. Guys, let's start this review. Let's get this baby off the ground. This is paid review 24 QA19. This is for Sean. And uh, let's run the intro. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Archie Luxury here, and we are doing a paid review. This is 24QA19. This is for Sean. That's correct, guys. Um, this was a paid review. And uh, this one here, let's have a look here. Let's have a look. Let's read the review. Um, he sent me a few pictures. Thank you for that there. I'll actually, let's, let's bring up um I'll, I'll bring that up on the the screen now so you guys can see what does his collection consist of let's get this baby on the screen let's get it up let's get it up come on guys get it up get it up get it up okay here we go and it's on the screen now uh dokey. let's have a look there gee a bit of a an eclectic no Rolex. Let's have a look here before we start. No Rolex. Do I see any Rolex? Rolex, please. Oh, one Rolex. Thank fucking God. Thank fucking God. One Rolex. Okay, one Rolex. Okay. Okay. Let's begin here. Okay. Let's let's begin this review here. Let's begin. He goes. Hi Arch. Hi, mate. Long time listener, first time caller. Sent you 100 US for an express and a long review. I'm 34 years old and have been into watches since I was 18 or so. I remember purchasing my first nice watch, some sort of Victorian Ox Quartz, when I was 18, 19 or 20. 19 or 20. I think 750, which was a lot of money for me at the time. My collection has varied over the years, but has always been sports watch centric. A lot of divers and sports chronos, and up until the last year or two, it was particularly Rolex heavy. Oh, fuck, he got rid of Rolex. That's not, that's not, that's not great. I was having less and less fun with Rolex customer experience as time went on, but you don't need to take it out on the watch. I mean, I'm fucked off with Louis Vuitton. They're a bunch of fucking selfie shuns of bitches, but. I still like the product. He goes, I was having less and less fun with Rolex customer experience as time went on and decided to point my collection elsewhere. And although I've owned some pieces that got into the 20,000 plus US dollar price point, I have found that my personal maximum happiness per dollar spent is all in the sub $10,000 range. Okay. Okay. okay, fair enough there. Fair enough. Uh, onto the collection. Most of these are fairly common pieces, so I won't try to say much. Going from left to right, top to bottom, but knocking out the beaters. First, Moon Swatch G Shock. Not much to say. Enjoyable quartz. Yeah, let's just ignore that garbage. 3861. Helselite Speedy. I previously owned two 1861 Speedmasters that I particularly warmed to, but they have really taken it, but have really taken to the 3861. Big fan of the updated bracelet. Yes, I agree. I love it. My longtime salesperson and friend at the Amiga AD purchased, passed away Christmas 2022. Fuck. 
He helped fuel my passion for watches when I was younger. He sold me the Victorinox I mentioned and was a big Speedmaster guy. I purchased this from the AD after his purchasing passing as a reminder of him. It'll be a forever piece. Interesting story. Fuck. 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 Sad. Condolences. Next, we got an Amiga C Master. Oh, is that Speedmaster or C? What is that? Speed, speed mask. What is it? SMP 300, Seamaster 300. I've owned a lot of Rolex divers over the years, and I believe they are objectively better watches than the Seamaster Professional, but the Seamaster Professional just makes me smile more. Big fan. I must admit, I love it. I love it on that shark mesh. I love the wave dial. Big fan of them. Would like to pick up a no time to die at some point. Uh, I don't know if you need it. You've got, I like, I prefer the one you've got. Currently have it on the Stabe bracelet. Next, we've got a Omega 8500 42 mil Planet Ocean. It's big, it's orange, it's a Planet Ocean. I'll only wear this on rubber, on the rubber strap. Find the Planet Ocean bracelets to be too heavy and awkward. Then we got a Breitling Navitimer B01. I'm a big aviation nerd, and this was my grail watch when I was a teenager. It's a previous generation watch. Prefer them over the current versions, particularly because of the winged B. I must say, I, I like it. I don't really notice much of a difference, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Then we got a Pam 111. Wanted a Pam and went to the classic. Great choice. Classic 111. This is a watch I'm happy to have. An ETA in yep I agree the ETA ones are probably that's probably the Pam I would like to have a 111 or a 112 recently broke the mainspring and paid all of a hundred yeah but okay fair enough fair enough okay um uh, I, I think you got to have a good watchmaker I wouldn't just say local cheapy I'd 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 have a good watchmaker I use but okay yeah you're right you're right it is easy to do number seven we got a Bell and Ross Gyro Compass. Now that's fucking, uh, I don't know. Hear me out on this one. This is a hard over mind. Resale value is horrible. They're too expensive for unmodified Salita movements. And this particular watch isn't very legible. However, it's just a fun watch and makes me smile. Fair enough. Fair enough. Then we got the Rolex 16600 Sea Dweller. Classic Rolex. This is a holes case with SEL solid end links. Which I, which I believe is a perfect combo. Have owned the 114060, the 116610, 126610 LV, and a 116613 LB previously, and prefer the Sea Dweller over all of those, maybe with the exception of the... Well, the Bluesy is a different style of watch. I love my Bluesy, but I do love your Sea... And I, I do agree with you. That is a classic. Then we got a Grand Seiko, Grand Seiko SBGV247, Japan only model for the 20th anniversary of the 9F quartz movement. Well, okay. It's a bit of an oddball in the Grand Seiko lineup, but I picked it up trading out a shit of, of a shit of Zodiac lying around in the watch box that got zero wear. Was happy to make the trade. Need to send it for a proper Grand Seiko polish at some point as it was well loved by the, okay, fair point. <coughs> Then we've got a Cartier tank must, 80s manual wine tank, has a pretty sort of starry midnight blue dial, doesn't get a lot of wear, but I would keep it around for fur. Uh, I would fuck it off. Too small, it's lady size. Get rid of it or give it to the wife. Then we've got a Cartier Santos, large and medium, his and hers, mine being the larger and Mrs. being the medium. Okay, that that is nice. That is really, that's actually really nice. I quite enjoy that that is really really nice looking forward to hearing from you be well um yeah yeah i get you that's uh some interesting watches there what do i what do i think look i like the collection take the garbage out I, whenever i see this collection here i think you have to realize the garbage you got to take the garbage out. The garbage has to go. There's no point sending me even talking about a Casio or, I mean, fuck. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Who cares? You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just telling you the truth. Nobody gives a fuck. 
they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about it. And that's the that's the whole thing. They don't give a fuck for good reason. Why would they care? Why would they give a fuck? And that's the that's the that's the whole thing to it. They don't give a fuck, okay? They truly don't give a fuck in the least. They don't care at all. And uh, no point wasting my fucking time with garbage, man. You got to review. We got to get it done. Get it out there fast and furious. Now let's have a look at what have we got in the watch box. We've got some interesting stuff here. Um, I got to tell you, there is interesting stuff, but there is interesting. Now the Cartiers. Let's be honest there. Three Cartiers. That that must that is a ladies' watch, okay? I don't give a fuck what anyone says there. That is a fucking ladies' watch. It's not a man's watch, okay? That's ladies. So the Cartier, okay, you have the Cartier, okay? That's that's quite acceptable to do that. I think the big letdown in this collection here is it's simple. Let me fucking tell you the truth. You need more Rolex. Okay, I admit Rolex are a bunch of cunts. They're fucking assholes. I agree, I agree, I agree. I hate Rolex dealers. They're fucking slimy sons of bitches. But go to David SW. You know, if you like a no holes, uh, sorry, you like a holes case, get the Explorer 2. That's a anti Rolex Rolex. I'd get an Explorer 2 Polar. Get, oh, we get a black dial. Fuck the Polar. Get the black because the black is no longer in fashion. It's the white that. So fuck the Polar. Fuck it. Fuck it. Get the get the uh, the black dial Explorer 2. Add some fucking Rolex, man. You need to add fucking Rolex. Stop punching around with the Cartiers. Fuck that off. Yeah, I mean, the Bell and Ross. I can accept it, but you need more Rolex. A collection like yours, I'll tell you the truth, you need four fucking Rolexes. You need an Explore a GMT. Explorer 2 is what I would go for. You need a Blue Dial Datejust or an Oyster Perpetual or a Z Blue. And as a fourth watch, you need a fucking ladies something for the wife. And don't do a 36. That's too punsy. I'd go for 31 or 28. Get a lady's fucking Rolex. That's what you need to do, okay? This whole collection here, get rid of this. That's fucking garbage. I don't even know why you cropped that into the photo. It's fucking shit, man. Nobody fucking cares about Fucking that garbage. Now, the Amigas, so much of Amiga lineup. Yeah, but you need four fucking Rolexes to balance this out. I mean, I, I accept the Amigas. You've gone crazy. How many Amigas? One. Oh, that's the, the, that's the Swatch one. That doesn't count. One, two, three Amigas. Well, you need to have at least three fucking Rolex, okay? Okay, and the ladies. Three plus one is four, fuckers. That's what you need. I don't mind the Breitling. I don't mind the Pam. You can even keep that fucking pussy Bell and Ross in there. That's okay. That's okay. But fuck me dead. Fuck, fuck, fuck me dead. Get. Get. You need more Rolex, okay? You need Rolex. Come on. You're earning big bucks. You're making the money. Get some fucking Rolex. You need Rolex. That's what you need. I can tell you exactly. You need you need three men's and one ladies. You need to get the Rolex count up, okay? It's the like testosterone. You got to get the fucker up. And I don't give a fuck. You don't like the deal. I hate fucking Rolex dealers. But be a man. Be a man and fucking deal with it, okay? Fucking deal with it. I know Rolex dealers suck. They're fucking cunts. They're all fucking cunts playing games. That's why you go to David SW and you fucking buy pre-owned, you stupid. That's what you fucking do. Okay, guys, that's the paid review for today. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Remember, I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I desperately need more paid reviews to fucking survive. Without this, I cannot survive. Survive, fuckers. I need to... Fucking survive. 
survive. That's what I need to do is survive. Without this, I can't survive. And you need to get a paid review done. Look down in the description. Do it now, fuckers. And if you're buying or selling a watch in America, it's simple. David SW. Hi, guys. It's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please, guys, save your dignity. Keep some pride. Go to David SW. I would highly recommend David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David SW.